Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Sam Kwok, one of the Kwok Brothers, and welcome back to our podcast, episode 32. And today we have a very special guest as well. And uh, we have an attorney, uh, Michael Conrad, uh, here's here to join us. And uh, before we get to the main uh, part of the podcast, I do want to make sure we cover uh, the book of the podcast, which is Extreme Ownership. And for those who are watching this, uh, whether recording or live, you guys can see the screen. And um, this book has literally changed the way that I perceive the tasks and my and, and very much helped me understand what responsibility uh, really is. Not within my own, uh, not just within uh, my own circle of influence, but also helped me understand how do I expand my influence and, and responsibility uh, as far as my business goes. So, if you guys want to pick up a copy of this book, I'll go ahead and leave the Amazon link in the description box below if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, you should be able to see the, uh, the, the description up top, right, instead of the bottom. So, uh, so make sure you pick up a copy, phenomenal book, and um, we'll definitely change your life. Now, uh, we got Michael here. Michael, can you hear me? Yep, here you good. All right, awesome. So Michael he is here to join us, and he is our main guest here, and I got, uh, I'm very excited to have him on board because uh, I mean, he's one of the brightest attorney I've, I've met, ever met. Uh, and that's not, that's not just to uh, uh, flatter him, right? And I'm telling the truth, right, based on my <laughs> opinion. Uh, so, Michael, uh, just kind of kick it off because a lot of people don't know who you are. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, uh, how many years you've, pr you've been practicing law, uh, how did you come about becoming an attorney, and so on. Okay. Well, I actually started out my career in finance. I actually worked down at the Mercantile Exchange and doing a numerous bunch of things, including clerking, filling the orders and things of this nature with euro dollars, T-bills, currency options, things of this nature. Um, and then I made a decision to, after I had gotten my MBA and everything else, as to whether or not I wanted to go out the pit and fill paper and do all that fun stuff or to go basically to law school. So, which I ended up going to law school, and I've been practicing law now for about 25 years. So, getting older. <laughs> yeah, and uh, here's a little uh, here's a little fun fact. Uh, I believe you've been practicing law as much as I've been around on planet Earth. Oh, gee, thanks. Make me feel so much better. <laughs> <laughs> well, to just give you a frame of reference, right? I mean, uh, Michael has been practicing law for a fairly long time. Uh, basically my lifetime, right? And um, so uh, aside from real estate, what, what other areas of uh, law do you practice typically? Oh, goodness. Uh, well, right now our practice consists of civil litigation, some family law right. stuff, uh, business development and formation, uh, just regular civil lit, and some workman's comp and PI. Sure. But uh, I have done... I used to work for the attorney general's office where we did the capital cases, which was interesting and in civil criminal appeals. Um, I've done insurance defense litigation. Um, we were actually part of general national council for all state in their environmental division when the super fund went broke. So I've been doing, I've done quite a few things actually there. Worn quite a few hats. Yeah, definitely. Very interesting. So uh, with all that background in mind, how did you, how did you get into real estate investing side of things? I actually bought my first building when I was still in law school, um, mm -hmm. actually. And it was interesting because, of course, it was done in the traditional way. And it was mm -hmm. something that started out a long time ago where basically I had, fortunately, I was blessed with two parents that said they wanted to get an apartment building, but they didn't know how to go about doing it. And it wasn't until I was older that I was actually saying, okay, let's go talk to a bank. Let's do the traditional way down and let's go. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we did. Um, and then from there on out, so we had bought a couple of other properties. I've been involved in rehabs and construction and things of this nature. I've built three houses for myself, as well as numerous other projects developed in things of this nature. So, um, I, to me, real estate's one of those things where if you go back in history, and history, while we don't want to repeat it a lot of times, it's a good predictor of where things are going. So, it's he who owns the land has the freedom, so to speak, mm -hmm. if you will. And everybody that I've known that actually invested in real estate at one point or another never hurt anybody that I know of. Um, in fact, it actually gave people a lot more freedom 
Um, it freed up a lot of time as far as working an 80 hour work week mm -hmm. where you had all of a sudden you're tapped on the shoulder because the corporation says, too sorry, we're downsized and have a nice day. And by the way, here's your last nice paycheck. Um, sure. You now have a safety blanket. Um, there's numerous reasons. People do it for retirement purposes, mm -hmm. additional income. I know, I've known people that actually put their kids to school with it. Yeah. Um, you know, and especially at this day and age, you know, you're talking about $100,000 a year, sometimes tuition with these things. It's, it's getting crazy out there. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, to me, it's a beautiful thing. But that's where I started with it. And basically, it bloomed out from there. Um, anything from commercial leases, negotiations, to developments, <laughs> um, to simple house closing. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah, and I, I, I can tell that you've had a tremendous amount of experience based on your advice and the guidance that you give both to my brother and I. Um, along with that said, um, just want to make sure that we're educating some of our listeners and people who are viewing this on YouTube, Facebook, wherever they're watching this. Uh, a lot of people who uh, are listening to this, Michael, they're starting brand new. Uh, they're looking to get in. They mm -hmm. may have a day job. They may not. Uh, but a lot, of, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the listeners have, um, have this desire, want to get started. And I think when I have conversations with them, and I'm sure you, you dealt, deal with this all the time and dealt with this all the time, uh, is the, the importance of having an attorney in your, in your team. Uh, if you're an investor. So um, tell us a little bit, how, is, how important is it to have an attorney uh, from all aspects, whether it's business um, formation, uh, closing, document preparation? Give us an idea uh, of uh, how important an attorney is in, in your team and what could go wrong if you don't have the proper professional in your team. Oh my goodness. So well, that's <laughs> basically the attorney, as much as people think that we don't do anything except talk on the phone or anything, mm -hmm. um, it's crucial. It really is. It yeah. can make or break a situation and depending upon the attorney, because again, not every attorney is, is versed in doing real estate transactions mm -hmm. or putting deals together or, you know, there's a big difference between stepping into a courtroom and basically negotiating contracts for doing things. Right. Okay. The mindset's a little bit different. It's the idea. And if you get a litigator that's going to try to do a real estate closing, it makes things tremendously difficult. Okay. <laughs> um, it, it really does. Um, I mean, I've had things where we've got a person who's on the other side who's not a real estate attorney. He's basically just a litigator and he's doing his first closing, his second closing. You don't do him that much. Mm. And it turns into a nightmare. It turns into a, a, a litigation case is what it ends up being. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is that if you don't have these documentations in and you don't have the right negotiating tools, even if it's just a simple purchase of a house, let's say you're buying your first home home. Um, it's not so much the price, but it's the idea that, okay, so now I've gone through, what are my tax prorations? What do I have to look for? Okay. Mm -hmm. What village am I in? Do they require inspections? Do they require a bond to be put up? What are they going to require? For instance, yeah. Glen Ellen requires basically that the village, there's, if there's issues concerning repairs, they want a bond put up. Mm. on the matter okay um if there's if that's the case or for instance let's say you're buying a condo and there's a special assessment who's going to pay for that there's all kinds of little pitfalls that you may or may not be aware of when you do these kinds of deals and one of the things that you have the attorney about is that you try to be a bird dog as much as possible to look for these pitfalls okay mm. now that that being said, I want, to, I want to talk about some inspection issues because that should be on the forefront, okay? Um, if you don't know what you're getting into, okay, and that's one of the biggest things because a lot of people start out there not so much with a buy and hold, but they're looking to do their first flip. Right. And then they're buying the property, they're rehabbing the property, and then they want to sell it, build the capital up, okay? Well, one of the things is, is you need to know what exactly you're getting yourself into. Inspections are important, okay? But remember, the inspector can only see what is outside, basically. We're not opening up the walls, so you could have issues in there. For instance, a sewer issue, okay? Let's say the sewer pipe collapsed, okay? We don't know that. It's backing up someplace down in the basement shower, but because they run it and the water goes down a little bit very slowly, mm -hmm. that's all that's indicated. Okay, it could be something along those lines. These are things that need to be very, very concerned with when you're going into your first deal. Okay. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you get the wrong attorney on conversely, you're going to have something where let's say the guy says, Oh, I want to do an article of agreement for deed. And the attorney says, Oh, you don't want to do that because they don't understand it or they've never right. done it or they've had a very bad experience with it. Those are things that you can run into. that can be very common. They can actually sell or a buyer or a seller on these things. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the issues that you have to deal with, not to mention 
that you've had situations before where you go up to the closing, if you're going to represent yourself, do you know how to read a legal description? Do you know what the tax durations and how they're calculated? What is the customary situation? Who's picking up transfer stamps? Mm -hmm. What other situations are required? Okay. Um, that being the case, you know, a good attorney can walk you through that. And if you, this is your first deal, then somebody should hold your hand down the line, walk sure. you through it. Okay. That's a big thing that you want to make sure of no matter who represents you, that they're going to hold your hand, especially if you tell them, well, this is my first deal. I'm not quite sure what I'm doing. Okay. Mm. Being, being your legal representative is as much as an informational or educational situation as it is representing them and basically negotiating the contract out. It's not as simple as sitting down at the table and saying, okay, the deed's good, that the bill of sale's good, okay, our title's good, let's move on, mm -hmm. okay? These are, these are things that you need to make sure that whoever's representing you basically has in there. And getting back to you talked about business formation, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that I'm seeing is, is that you get the wrong person, they'll put together the LLC, but then you don't have an operating agreement. Right. What's your operating agreement? Okay. And a lot of things is if you have people that want to do joint ventures with, you. for instance, mm -hmm. one person's putting up the money, the other person's going to put in the labor. How, how is this being dividend? What's spelled out? Everything needs to be spelled out. And yet I see people still doing handshake deals and then they won't, they're not understanding when the deal goes south because of course everybody's happy until something happens. And then when there's money involved in it, then everybody's upset. So it's the idea here. Make sure that things are spelled out significantly and clearly for all the parties involved. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I, I mean, I can't recall a specific situation, but I, I've, I've met a lot of people uh, who try to close or do deals without an attorney, and they actually end up paying more in trying to fix that problem versus if they would have just paid for an attorney from the, from the get-go and uh, close the deal that way. So. That seems to be pretty common from, from the conversations I've, I've had. So along that theme, uh, what, is a whole, what, what are some horror stories that you can think of? Um, pretty much anything within real estate investing and some of the lessons that you personally learned out of it. And I'm sure the, the, the set real estate investor has also learned a lesson from uh, this horror story. Oh, my goodness. Okay. One of the first things is, is the guys had a handshake deal. They were doing a rehab property. Uh -huh. One guy was supposed to put up the money. The other guy was supposed to handle all the general contract. Mm -hmm. No written agreement, no nothing. Okay. Well, the long and short of it, it ends up in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. It's basically, if you're stepping foot in there, forget it. You've lost any property you're going to have. You're actually going into deficit spending. You're talking tens of thousands of dollars worth of litigation for something that could have been easily avoided with maybe, you know, a thousand dollar basically mm -hmm. documents. Okay. Um, both of these individuals, what ended up happening is it got so bad that they couldn't even sit in the same room. <laughs> um, it, was, it was horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, trying to depose the person who was supposed to handle the contractors, mm -hmm. I mean, the general contractor, he didn't really find out later on, didn't really know what he was doing. And that's the other thing. You got to make sure you know who your contractor is. Are these documents in writing? Okay. Mm -hmm. What are they doing? What's the scope of work? Okay. What are they doing for this? And then this is becoming more and more where somebody shows up at a job site and does something and says, oh yeah, I did it all. Now pay me. Mm -hmm. and they haven't done anything. Okay. Right. Um, that was one of the things he didn't have any lien waivers, uh, which is a big thing. And what I mean by that is, is if you <clears> sub, for instance, let's say you got a plumber that comes in, supposed to put a toilet in, do all this fun stuff and boom, he does it. But then he gets paid, but nobody doesn't give you anything saying that, yep, I've been paid for it and all the material's been paid. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I had a horror story actually on a natural closing where literally it was a friend of mine. And what ended up happening was we thought it was new construction. His wife was pregnant with her second child mm -hmm. and literally got served on a Friday night uh, from the sheriff. And of course, I'm out for dinner. He's got my cell phone. So, of course, I get the frantic call of, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And, you know, of course, his wife is saying, didn't you pay the mortgage? Didn't you do that? Blah, 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 blah. Long story short, the general contractor in this particular case, the developer never paid the cement contractor for the subdivision. Mm. So the, the cement contractor leaned the whole subdivision and was trying to foreclose their lease. Wow. Well, in that particular case, you know, and it was an easy fix because we did have some title insurance. I had waivers from everybody, so we were good to go. 
you know, but it was still, these are the types of horror stories that you run into. And remember with real estate, the mistakes, while they may seem little, they're extremely expensive. Right. So that's why the costs are, when you're talking about this stuff, um, <laughs> one of the things is when in doubt, disclose, especially if you're selling a property. Okay. Right. Um, you know, I just got, I just basically just had a transaction where people, we found out when they got into the property after a home inspection that they had painted the basement. Why did they paint the basement? Well, because, of course, they got water in there. Yeah. And they didn't want them to see the water line. I mean, and it's like, okay, you know, as the attorney, I don't see the property, okay? I'm not going to go out there and tour the property, but mm -hmm. the home inspector missed it. Now, one of the things that people need to be aware of with a home inspector, they're only liable for up to their fee, and that's in their agreement. And people don't understand this, and they think, oh, the home inspector. You've got to be very careful, which is why I always sure. tell people, go along with the home inspector and ask them questions when they're going through this, mm -hmm. okay? And get somebody who they know what they're doing, all right? right? Don't just get, you know, mom, you know, Papa Joe here that I know down the street who's, you know, the ex-contractor. And sometimes those guys are good, but you know what? It's not going to be really. Get a professional who they've had luck with yep. um, in the past from other people. Okay, that's what I can tell you on this. I mean, I have a situation right now. Here's the other thing you gotta watch: liens. Okay, um, especially if you're doing work in the city of Chicago or one of the big major metropolitan areas. Yep. Okay, they usually have housing authorities. Okay, I just had a gentleman come in to me who bought a three flat. The next thing you know, he's getting slapped with a lien because basically he, the former owner, who we now can't find basically had code violations that didn't pop up on the title because the city didn't record their lien until well after we had closed mm -hmm. and nobody knew about it. So these are the types of situations yeah. that you have to watch out for, especially with rental properties. Mm -hmm. If it's an owner occupied, it might be a little bit different, but again, it's something you need to ask because remember when the deal is done, good luck finding the seller. Yeah. Okay. They're going to be gone They're in the wind, as we say. <laughs> so it's difficult. Sometimes you can find them, but it's difficult. And, you know, don't rely on, so I'm going to go back and we're going to go after the seller and the seller's going to pay for this stuff. Right. Okay. A lot of times we can't find these people. They're gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if they don't want to be found, a lot of these people, it's, and, and believe me, they'll seem honest. They'll seem, you know, as simple as like putting a rug over a loose tile. Okay. So when you walk on it, it doesn't move. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. Those are the things you have to watch out for. Mm -hmm. And that's why usually when they have inspections, they don't want the selling party there. They want it to be basically somebody to be able to walk in the property and to do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, great tips. And, uh, and I, I'm, I'm very glad that you have the wisdom and the experience uh, from, you know, having, having go through those horror stories and experience yourself. So, um, you know, bottom line, you know, CYA, right? Cover your assets and um, really, Absolutely. yeah, work with someone like, like Michael, uh, who has experience, who, who can, you know, who can spot the red flag, uh, which oftentimes, unfortunately, a lot of people spot them after they, you know, buy the set property or go through a transaction, in which uh, is super unfortunate. And, you know, this, I think this is so common that people don't talk about it. Uh, even for me, you know, when I buy properties, we always end up having to, uh, it almost seems like there's little things that we always had to clean up. Uh, and usually Michael gets involved or, um, you know, the contractor gets involved to cl clean up any sort of uh, mess that the sellers left or have not disclosed. So, um, so as we kind of wrap up here, and I'm, I'm going to give some opportunities for people who are watching this live, give, uh, get some questions answered if there are, if there are any. Uh, but Michael, what are your thoughts on the market right now? Uh, as of which, you know, it's September 11th, 2018. What are your thoughts on the market? Where do you think we're going? And I, I know you have a very keen insight on, on uh, what the market's doing. Nationally or locally? Which one are we talking about? I think <laughs> yeah, nationwide. I mean, we've got listeners from all across the country. So it's going to get very interesting because you're going to see interest rates going up, which of course, yeah. you know what happens then when the interest rates go up, the prices are going to come down. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, historically, you have seen recessions basically after this is happening. Um, but the, you know, in general, the, not the real estate market, but the stock market has been doing very well. Profit, mm -hmm. Profits for companies have been coming in. Okay. Um, but you have to be very careful with certain localized markets, which is why I asked you the question, locally right. or nationally. 
Um, for instance, Illinois, we have a gubernatorial election coming up here. Mm-hmm. Okay, property taxes are really starting to take an impact uh, on basically homeowners. Period. Okay, and honestly, there is doesn't seem to be an end in sight for this stuff for Illinois mm-hmm. uh, on the matter. Now, you, I'm I think you're still safe with multifamily stuff. Um, I really believe that because even seniors are moving here out of their homes and they're going into um, rental properties, which they can find. Okay. In fact, I had clients actually move back here into a condo because they were able to find a condo with very uh, low assessments as opposed to buying a single family home um, Sure. on the matter. Um, I think California, you're going to see some prices starting to dip as it goes up. These interest rates go up. Mm -hmm. Um, There's extreme pressure there on that particular market. Um, You know, certain uh, certain factors, I think, though, with your investment properties, I still think you're going to start seeing an increase in particular states. You've got to watch and see where your migrations are going. Mm -hmm. Things Um, There seems to be a migration south. Um, Tennessee, of course, is still booming. Okay, Indiana is going strong. Um, although you're seeing a lot of building up in Wisconsin, you're seeing a migration from Wisconsin, primarily from Illinois, but Wisconsin, mm-hmm. um, Michigan has started to turn around some of the areas. Okay. Um, I know actually, uh, Florida is still booming right now, but remember when everything, whenever there's a movement in the market, it's always going to be more dramatic on the coast as it is in the Midwest. And that's right. something that'd be looking at. Okay. As far as, um, uh, commercial properties in that, mm-hmm. um, strip malls, things of this nature, again, it's going to depend on location. Now, the thing of it is with a strip mall, what are you putting in there? You have to look at the businesses and see what's going on with that. Okay. Again, we've limited a lot of these things. Are there insurance agencies? Okay. One of the things that's going on with insurance agencies is you're seeing uh, a cutback on commissions. Okay. Uh, Farmers, for instance, just restructured all their commissions for their agents. Mm. So that's going to be interesting because let's face it, little strip balls, it's a perfect thing to put an insurance agent in there. Okay. But most of it's going to be service stuff. It's not going to be um, any type of a a manufacturing thing. Um, So what are you, you're kind of limited to it. Do you have a restaurant? Do you have a liquor store, a tobacco store, a convenience store? Um, Do you have a tanning salon? This is what you're seeing coming up there. Sure. Uh, on the matter. But, but again, what I'm seeing is, is I think you're going to see a dip in, in some of the home prices, which you're going to start to see because the interest rates are going to be going up. Um, a lot of this, and remember, we've got midterm elections coming up in, in yeah. the fall. So this is going to get interesting to see what happens, okay, with everything. So oh this is going to dictate. But as far as things go, if they continue on the pace, I think you're going to see the Fed raising the interest rate. Um, now, and then depending upon which state it is, though, you know, again, you're starting to see prices creep up. Tennessee, like yeah. I said, perfect example. Big migration there, not only population-wise, but businesses as well, because there's no state income taxes. It's a very healthy, mm-hmm. healthy economy situation down there. And labor labor markets, there's no labor unions down there, so that's a huge thing. So in that particular market, you're starting to see prices going up more mm-hmm. than you can imagine. Okay, But you can still get good deals, because depending upon where it is. Here in Illinois, with single-family homes, Depends on where you're at. Um, sure. I know they've been, they're doing a development, but it's going to have to be, again, I'm still seeing, I'm thinking, I'm going to say 250 to 300 and down, probably still move. That's going to be affordable to most people. Mm-hmm. Everything over that, I think you're going to have a land time of six months. To- yep. Yeah, and I, I, I would agree. And it's, it's actually interesting you, uh, you mentioned the general or midterm election, because uh, I did mention that. Um, Four episodes ago, we had to we had to pay attention who is getting elected, especially in the context of Illinois. Uh, we're going to get a new attorney general, possibly, uh, and uh, yep. you know, like you said, uh, the governor's race is uh, is happening. You know, the, the election's happening this uh, this November, and the the question now is who's going to be elected into the the House and the Senate, which could also change some of the legislature um, climate for sure. Um, so. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because four episodes ago, I, I, I told everyone, hey, pay attention to who's getting elected because depending on what, they're, what they want to pass, what they want to support, things could change uh, even on the local level, what, which I think is more important than on the, on the federal uh, level of things. So, um, yeah, thank, thank you so Absolutely. much for mentioning that. Absolutely. Yeah, very important. So, um, 
before we wrap this up, uh, I want to leave, I'm going to actually open it up for people who are uh, watching this live for any sort of question. And um, so for those who are watching this live, you guys can either raise your hand or unmute yourself and go ahead and speak and ask any question. Now, if you don't have any questions, that's totally cool. Uh, we can end it here if you want, but I want to give you guys an opportunity to ask Michael any question. Now, we don't have, we can't prolong this really, really long. Uh, we're going we're to try to keep this short and concise as possible. So, uh, Elizabeth, is it? Yes, it is. Hi. I have a couple of questions, please. Yeah. I'm in Los Angeles, California, and fortunately, I have not <clears throat> had to use a lawyer in my lifetime, but now I'm pursuing this real estate path, and specifically, I'm pursuing uh, seller carry financing. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. I'm interested in knowing what are your thoughts on using an escrow or I think escrow title company to document the agreement versus an attorney. Okay. Okay. So California is one of those states where basically the title companies do a lot of the work that's traditionally done by the attorneys. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, they're very specialized. Their bar is very specialized when it comes to that. Um, depending upon your transaction. Um, can it now remember this. The title company, though, when they're doing the paperwork, they're going to protect themselves. They're not going to be protecting you, okay? And that's the one thing you have to understand. They're going to go through their process, but and they're going to use standard documents that they have prepared, okay? But the, the, really, the whole thing of it is, and this is when you get into states, like a lot of the Western states do that, where the attorneys are not involved or the borrower is not involved with closings like this, where... First of all, you don't have immediate settlement like we have here in Illinois. And this is going to vary from state to state to state, depending upon what it is, okay? Um, there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. However, I would make sure that you review those documents. And if you can get an attorney involved, to have independent representation for you just to look at those documents and to make certain suggestions, it's always better. Now, I know California, that gets a little bit pricey on the thing on the matter, but again, if you're right around there, depending upon some of those properties uh, down around Los Angeles, I mean, they're not cheap. So it's even it's probably money that's very, very well spent if you get the right person that can make suggestions to what those agreements are. Mm -hmm. But again, that's very typical for California to do the escrow closings and, and the attorneys have to be involved, especially with simple real estate deals. Now, when you start getting a little bit more complicated, like what you're referring to, which is the articles for deed or contract for deed situations, that's when I usually suggest, hey, get somebody who really knows what they're doing to look at that stuff, okay? Because again, the title companies are going to protect themselves so they don't have claims. Is really what they're looking for, okay? Okay, got it. Thank you. And do we have time for one more question? Yeah, shoot for one <laughs> okay. more. Um, yeah. My second question is, uh, what are your thoughts on having rental property in my name versus an LLC. Okay. Remember this. If, if it's personally in your name, that means you can personally be attached to if there's a judgment devil. Okay. And that includes not only that asset, but any assets that are in your name. Okay. So do you have a 401k for instance? It's in your name. Hello, that's an asset that can be used to satisfy a judgment. And that's the pitfall, okay? Um, you should go, and I'm going to use this example. People would say, oh, I don't want to do a will. I'm just going to put my child's name on the property so some have to go to that. Well, all of a sudden, the child gets divorced, and somebody sues the child, and there's a judgment. Guess what? That child's name is now on your house. Do you want somebody to be able to do that and to come after your house and, your, and anything else that his name is on or her name is on? Of course not. So I always suggest that you try to make as much space as possible. The whole purpose with the LLC or any type of entity that you're holding in corporation is to limit the liability to that particular asset. Okay. <laughs> and again, if you're doing this right, remember, you're going to have a layer of insurance. But what you're really worried about is, is can we get through that layer of insurance? Is there penetration beyond that protection? Okay. That's what we're concerning ourselves with. And with, it, with an injury situation, it's possible. It is possible depending upon what happens. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you very much. Awesome. And yeah, well. thank, you. thank you, Elizabeth, for, uh, for asking the question. And thank you, Michael, for, uh, and I think, um, Honestly, we might have to uh, have you come back, Michael, just, just to talk about the asset protection side of things because I think that's a whole 
another topic. Uh, we can well, that's a whole other that. issue you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, a whole other issue. Great. So, Michael, thank you so much for tuning in to, uh, with us uh, and contributing to our podcast, answering the questions that we have. Uh, really, I, you tr- you provided a tremendous amount of value uh, to you know our questions. So, Michael, we'll love to we, we will love to have you back uh, for another episode. Uh, maybe next quarter, next year, who knows? Uh, but we'll definitely, we'd love to have you back and speak more on other uh, legal topics and conversation. Sounds good. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me on. Have a great night. All right. Take care, guys. So, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, one last little quick plug that I want to make sure that you guys um, uh, have. And I I don't think we we do this much. But uh, for those who are listening, recording, or live, uh, if you guys are wanting to expand your real estate investing knowledge, if you guys want to – uh, get some coaching, perhaps, some education in real estate investing. Uh, be sure to check out our website, uh, thecooperators.com slash learn, if you're interested in having uh, an opportunity where you can learn more with a coach, uh, with instructors, with classes. Uh, more information will be available to you at thecooperators.com slash learn. Uh, we'll make sure, uh, for those who are watching this on YouTube or on Facebook, you'll see it right here uh, underneath the screen. And you'll see it in the link description down below on YouTube. Uh, and that also being said, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click, I, click like on this video. Uh, and uh, you'll be supporting us for us uh, to have more videos out in the future. So guys, thank you so much. Have a good night. And I will see you in another episode.